Hey Math 31, I had a question on how you do number 61, so I wanted to take a look. Um, here we have something called a rational inequality. So let me just write that phrase down. When you hear a rational, and we'll use that a lot this semester, but the word rational has a specific word in it, right? ratio. So when you hear a rational inequality, that's fancy math speak for we must be looking at a fraction, and you can see here that we, we do have a fraction. Uh, we have a numerator and a denominator. And I talked earlier about the three domain issues that you run into in math. So let's just reiterate those real quick. So the three domain issues that I have are fractions, where the denominator is zero. We can also have radicals, right? When we have an even index with a negative radicand. And I know that's a lot of vocab. So let me just give you a for instance. If I had the fourth root of x plus 2, all right, just so that we're, we're clear here, this is my even index, so my index in this case is 4. And my radicand, let me use a different color, my radicand is x plus 2. So I would need to make sure in this case that my radicand, again being x plus 2, that would have to be greater than 0. So if I wanted to solve for a domain issue here, I would need x plus 2 to be greater than or equal to 0. All right, my third domain issue, and we'll run into this in chapter 6, is when you have a logarithm where the argument is 0 or negative. So where argument, another way of saying that, let me write it both ways, where argument is 0 or negative, And another way of saying that is the argument is not positive. Okay. And to give you an example of that, let's say I had a function where f of x was the logarithm of x plus 2. Well, here, if I take a look at my argument, my argument is everything in the parentheses. So how I would solve this is I would need x plus 2, this time to be strictly greater than 0. So when you're dealing with radicals, you can have radicals that are greater than or equal to 0 because you're allowed to take the square root of 0. But with logarithms, your argument has to be strictly positive. We can't take the logarithm of a negative number or a 0. All right, that's all. This is just side chat. So let's get back to the question at hand. How do I handle this, this rational inequality? So whenever you have a rational inequality, the first thing you really want to do, or I should say the first thing I do, is I set both of my numerator and denominator to 0. So I'm going to look at where x minus 5 is equal to 0, and I'm also going to look at where x plus 7 is equal to 0. So here's where I'm going to get my 5, and here's where I'm going to get my negative 7. And you see those two numbers, they do pop up, right? We see 5 and negative 7 pop up in my interval, but how do I know which interval to pick? So I'm going to show you something called a, a sign pattern, so just so we can take a look at that. All right, so let me, let me focus on this. I'm going to show you a sign pattern. All right, and what a sign pattern is, is let's say we started with the entire number line. So let's say we started with negative infinity to positive infinity. And what I want to kick in here is I want to put in negative 7, and I want to put in positive 5. All right, so this is just going to be the sign pattern method. And if you're wondering why am I talking about a sign pattern, well, they become more important when you get into calculus. So I just want to give you a preview. All right, so as we take a look at this, let, let's see what we got. So if I'm taking a look at x equaling 5 or negative 7, well, at negative 7, all right, let's, let's start with this number. Let me start using a different color just so. So I want to start here. I want you to think about what would happen if I plug negative 7 into my original 
rational inequality. And I'm hoping you see, well, if I plug negative 7 in, I get a domain issue. So technically, at negative 7, my rational inequality doesn't exist. Okay. Now let's plug in positive 5. Let me erase all this. So I'm going to plug positive 5 in here. Now if I plug positive 5 into that rational inequality, I circled that numerator because when I plug that number in, I'm going to get 0 over 12, right? Because I would have 5 minus 5, which is 0, 5 plus 7, which was 12, and 0 over 12 is just 0, all right? And so what we're starting to set up here is something called a sign pattern, where below this this number line are your x values, and above this number line are the values of x minus 5 over x plus 7. So one way of taking a look at that, let me get another highlighter, is saying when x is negative 7, the rational inequality doesn't exist. When x is 5, the rational inequality doesn't exist. Now, again, you don't have to do it this way. I'll show you a different way, and you might think at the end, oh, geez, that was faster. Why didn't you just give us that? Again, this is a preview for Math 15. Okay, so once we get these baselines set up, once we get our points of interest at negative 7 and 5, we pick test points. So what that means is I'll go to the right of 5, and I'll pick any x value larger than 5. So you could pick 6, you could pick 7, you could pick 25. It doesn't matter. All right, but what you're going to do is whatever number you pick here, you're going to substitute that into your original inequality. And what you want to see is its sign. So you have to decide, is this thing positive or is this thing negative? OK, so let's think about this. If I plug 25 in, right, and let me change colors just so we see it. If this becomes 25 minus 5, that would give me a 20 on the numerator and then what a 32 on the denominator. So let me change colors again. I'm going to erase this part. So if I plug 25 in, just because I picked it, that would give me 25 over 32, and that number is positive. So you would put a positive symbol up here on the sign pattern, okay? All right, and again, I know you're thinking, like, what are you making me do here? Preview, preview. All right, so then let's pick another number. I'm going to pick now a number in between negative 7 and 5. And I usually pick 0 when I can. So again, I want to plug this into x minus 5 over x plus 7. And when I do that, if I plug in 0, I'm going to get negative 5 over positive 7 this time out. And that's going to be a negative number. So I'm going to put the negative symbol here. And then I'm going to try yet another test point of negative 8. All right, so if I take a look at negative 8, let me plug that one into x minus 5 over x plus 7. That would give me negative 13 over negative 1, which would be positive 13, right? So our takeaway here is that we have a positive number. And there we go. So just thinking, thinking about what we have here, I had a test point of negative 8, 0, and in this case, 25. Because I wanted to test the interval between 5 and infinity, I wanted to test the interval between negative 7 and positive 5, and then negative infinity to negative 7. All right, and again, here comes the big finish. Why am I doing all of this? Well, if we look at our original inequality, oops, it said, hey, look for where you are less than or equal to zero. So if we think about the symbol, and I'm going to go over here, if we think about less than or equal to zero, that means I want to look for where everything is negative or zero. So I'm going to collect my signs. I see a negative sign here. I see a zero here. And so those are the intervals I want to keep. I want to keep all of the stuff between negative 7 and positive 5. But because I have a D and E here, I put a parentheses around the negative 7, and I put a bracket around the positive 5. And that's where I'm getting my final answer. And I know that seems like a lot. And I'm about to show you the shorter way, and then you're going to get annoyed with me and be like, why didn't you have us just do it the shorter way? And again, it's a preview for calculus. So I'm going to erase this whole sign pattern shenanigans, and then we're just going to start in at 5 and negative 7. So let me erase all of this. All right, so all of my sign pattern work is going away. All right, give me a moment. All right, let's remake our number line. 
So I'm still going to start from negative infinity to positive infinity. I still want to put negative 7 here, and I want to put positive 5 here. All right, I'm going to put, uh, if we look at our inequalities, I'm going to put a closed dot on 5, and I'm going to put a closed dot on negative 7. But you have to, again, keep in mind that if you plugged in negative 7, it would give you a D and E. So really what you want to do is put an open dot here, all right, because of the D and E. All right, so let's graph this out. I'm going to do two different colors. So let me take a look at my first inequality, X minus, oops, excuse me, let me do the solved version. X is less than or equal to 5. So let me shade X is less than or equal to 5. Okay, and that would keep on going. All right, now let me change colors. And let's do x is greater than or equal to negative 7. And if I did x was greater than or equal to negative 7, it would be these guys. All right, now, where do those two intervals overlap? I think you can see where they overlap. They overlap from negative 7 to positive 5. And again, I would have a parentheses around here because of the D and E and a bracket here. All right, so I know, I know, much easier than the sign pattern. I'll put a little, mm, sorry, I know it's easier, but I, I just wanted you to see the sign pattern, just so you, again, preview for Math 15. All right, but that's how we solve this rational inequality. All right, so thanks so much, gang. I'll see you later. Bye.